90% of millionaires claim that they have made their wealth through real estate. Real estate has been one of the best investments ever. Unlike all of these industries where it's not clear how to make millions of dollars, how to start from zero and build a million dollar or a billion dollar portfolio, in real estate there is a step-by-step -step guide that anyone can follow and make millions of dollars. And some people ended up making billions of dollars out of real estate. It's not a rocket science. It's an open book that's open for everyone who is serious about getting into real estate. Yes, there is a lot of work in the beginning. Yes, you have to hustle and build up something in order to get your first property. But once you do that, building the rest of your wealth in real estate is significantly easier than any other industry. But here is the most interesting question. Why the most successful investor of all time, Warren Buffett, never invests in real estate? This guy knows more about investing than anyone else in the world. He literally built a trillion dollar empire. And yet when it comes to real estate, he does not want to invest even a million dollars into real estate. Even if you go back to 2020, when mortgage rates were below 3%, Warren Buffett still hesitated to invest in real estate when he was sitting on $150 billion worth of cash. Imagine if he invested just a billion dollars out of that $150 billion cash portfolio into real estate. Imagine how much money he could be making right now. And yet with all of his investing wisdom and knowledge, he decided that investing in real estate is a bad idea. On one side, we have real estate that's the best investment ever, the industry that made most of the millionaires in the United States and probably around the globe. On the other side, we have the world's greatest investor of all time who does not want to invest in real estate. I mean, even Charlie Munger and many other most successful investors on Wall Street do not want to invest in real estate. So what is the big deal here? What do these people know about real estate that everyone else doesn't? Are they hiding something from us? Do they know something that gets them to billions of dollars while everyone is stuck at making millions of dollars from real estate? These are some of the questions that I want to answer in this video and just tell you exactly why Warren Buffett never invests a penny in real estate. Yes, he purchased his house on a mortgage back in 1970s or something like that, but he never invested seriously in real estate at all. So by the end of this video, you will either be obsessed with real estate and would love real estate and would want to invest in real estate, or you will absolutely hate real estate and will be like Warren Buffett and will never invest in real estate again. So if you're ready for a brutally honest conversation about real estate, give this video a thumbs up and let's dive in. If you take a look at the numbers and go back to 2009, the median house price was around $200,000. Fast forward to 2022, at the peak of the housing market, the median house price was a little less than half a million dollars. So anyone who has invested in real estate back in 2008, back in 2009 or 10 has 100% made money on his investment. There is no way you could have lost on that investment. In fact, if you just zoom out and take a look at the graph historically and take a look at the prices of the real estate over the long run, you will find out that it's crystally clear that house prices are rising over time. Yes, time to time we have real estate crashes. Time to time prices go down. Time to time prices plummet. But overall, historically, real estate never disappoints. It's the largest market in the United States. Do you know what's the total value of the housing market in the United States? It's over $120 trillion with a T. It's literally the largest market. Like this is the US economy and the foundation of the US economy is the housing market. So if this market is so important, we know for a fact that this market is not going to collapse. Yes, it could collapse, but it will be the last thing that will collapse in the United States. Unlike other companies that provide you with specific service, let's say for example, you can perfectly live without a McDonald's, but can you live without having a roof over your head? Absolutely not. Housing satisfies one of your basic needs. So we know for a fact that people have no choice. People have to have a roof over their head and they will pay to have a house. So there isn't such a thing that the housing market will crash tomorrow to zero and the value of your house will drop to zero. No, absolutely not. 
in the long run, your house will keep rising in value no matter what happens in the world or no matter what happens in the country. And here is something that I want to clarify here. When we say that there is a housing market that is coming or there will be a housing crash, nobody is talking about having a 50% crash. No, a housing crash means that house prices could crash by 5%, 7%, or maybe 10%. Like the worst case scenario could be what happened in 2008, which is literally known as the housing crisis, when house prices crashed by around like 30% or something like that. So don't be scared by the fact that there will be a housing crash. No, the value of your house will not go to zero no matter what. And now stop for a moment and ask yourself, why Warren Buffett, who witnessed the 2008 housing crash, did not jump in and invested billions of dollars into the housing market? Now, if you go back to 2007 and 6, you will find out that Warren Buffett clearly knew that there is a bubble in the housing market and he was preparing himself for such a crisis. He knew that the crisis is coming, the bubble will burst and the housing market will crash catastrophically, which is exactly what happened. So if the guy could accurately predict the 2008 housing crash, why didn't he invest? Because he certainly knew that house prices will keep rising in the future. What exactly has stopped him from throwing his billions of dollars into the housing market when the opportunity was literally right under his nose? Yes, house prices do not rise as much as stocks, for example. But you have to understand that house prices rise slowly. But at the same time, real estate provides you with real passive income. Like you're getting your rental income every single month. As a former realtor and uh, real estate investor today, I can tell you for a fact that there isn't a great source of income such as real estate because you know that it's yours. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can rent it out, and you know that paycheck is coming out at the end of every single month. You know that you're making money. So Warren Buffett, understanding all of this, and he knows clearly real estate and investing way better than me, way better than anyone watching this video. And yet he decided that, sorry guys, I'm skipping on this opportunity. Why? Let's go back to 2020 when the global pandemic happened. Remember when the virus starts spreading across the world? The, the governments had to one way stop the virus from spreading. So the best strategy was that to keep people stay at their homes. But the biggest problem with that strategy is that if you force people to stay in their homes, the economy will just stop growing. And you see, the economy is like a wheel. And if that wheel stops spinning, then it's extremely difficult to start spinning it again. It's going to cost much more money. So the best thing would be to do is that is to keep it spinning even though people are sitting at home. And that's why the government and the Fed decided that it's time to print money. Yes, they printed trillions of dollars. But besides doing that, they also lowered the rates to literally 0% in order to make money accessible to people. And that meant that people could now borrow money at a super low rate, which means that they could borrow money at a super low rate with fixed mortgage rates and buy houses. Like for example, the average mortgage rate right now is around 7%. But during the pandemic, it was less than 3%. Like some people got a fixed year, 30 year mortgage at 2.5%. That's an amazing deal. And if anybody got such a deal during the COVID, congratulations. You get yourself a great deal, you made yourself a great favor, you will never regret it. In fact, the people who did not take such a deal will definitely regret not making such an investing decision. You see, if you go back to 2008, the government acted a bit lately. Like, if the government acted a bit fast with printing money back in 2008, the 2008 housing crash wouldn't be as bad as it was. Because the government was shocked out of that crisis. And the Fed wasn't used to printing so much money in the past, which is why it was a bit hesitant to actually start that printing journey. But eventually they did it and it cost the economy trillions of dollars. But that's not the point. The point is that 2020 and 2021 was some of the best years to buy a house. Some of the best years to borrow money, get mortgages and start buying as many houses as possible. And when it comes to mortgage rates, mortgage rates are the most important factor to consider when you buy a house. Like this is the number one factor. I mean, if you take a look at the US housing market, you'll find out that over 70% of the houses 
in the United States are financed with a mortgage. You see, real estate is extremely expensive. Like most people cannot simply just buy houses or as many houses as they want. Because let's say, for example, your salary is like $100,000. You're making six figures. That's a good amount of money. And the house you want to buy is $700,000. Now, let's assume for a moment that you're super frugal and you save half of your income, which is impossible for most people watching this video. But let's just assume for a moment that's the reality. That's how you live. You're saving half of your income. Do you know how many years you need to save to save $700,000? Yes, exactly. Around what, 15 years to save that much money? So it's not feasible for most people to buy a house, which is why we have something called a mortgage. A mortgage is when you go to the bank and you borrow money and buy that house. And when you borrow money, you usually borrow it at a fixed rate. So that fixed rate is the most important factor to think about when buying a house. Because even a difference of 0.5% in that mortgage rate will make a huge difference in your monthly payments. That's what you should be paying attention to. That's why in 2020 and 2021, when mortgage rates were so low, that was the best period to buy a house. Now, let's take just one example just to illustrate to you how important and how powerful these mortgage rates are. If you buy that $700,000 house with a 3% mortgage rate, which was extremely feasible back in 2020, your monthly payments, let's include insurance, taxes, and other expenses, it will be around $3,000, probably less than that, probably like $2,900 or something like that. And now let's take the exact same house and assume that the mortgage rate is going to be 7%, which are the mortgage rates today. So if you buy the exact same house at 7% mortgage, your monthly payment will be over $4,000. Look at the difference. You're paying what extra $1,500 just because you're paying a different mortgage rate. And that's why I'm not exaggerating when I say that 2020 and 2021 was some of the best periods or one in a lifetime opportunity to buy a house because you won't get such an opportunity in the future. If you had like $10 million and you use that $10 million to buy as many houses as possible and you finance them with a 30-year mortgage and around 3%, all of these properties today would be profitable and you would be making a ton of money. You will sit out there and collect your passive income every single month and you will not have to work another day in your life. So if there were so many great opportunities when it comes to real estate, why Warren Buffett still hesitates to invest in real estate? Like, what is the logic behind his investment decisions? Like, this is an opportunity. It's right under your nose. Is he afraid to invest? Before anyone trash talks Warren Buffett, even though that you might not disagree with him, please have some respect. Yes, he might have said things that you don't like. He might have said things such as, Bitcoin is worthless and you're a fan of Bitcoin. But overall, if you look at Warren Buffett, he is the best investor that the world has ever seen. Because when you build a company, not just by building a business or building a product, he built a $900 billion company by picking up the right investments, by picking up the right stocks. And his personal net worth is around $130 billion. There isn't a single investor on the face of the earth who could come close even to what Warren Buffett has done. So this guy clearly knows something about real estate and his opinion really matters. As a former realtor and a real estate investor, I can tell you for a fact that real estate is not as passive as most people imagine. It's not like you purchased a property and it will forever keep making you money. One of the things about real estate is that there is something always breaks down. Like it's a property and people use that property and you have to maintain it in well, and you have to maintain it in order for it to keep producing money. And finding a tenant is not that easy as many people think. Yes, if your real estate is located in a prime location, there will always be demand for that real estate, no matter what is happening in the world, no matter what crisis is going on, no matter how big is the pandemic that has hit the world. Prime locations, there will always be demand for them. However, let's be just a bit, Let's generalize a bit. Let's be a bit more realistic. Most people buying real estate will not buy in a prime location. So if it's not located in a prime location, you will not always easily find a tenant. Yes, some, some, yes there are some periods in the economy where everything is booming and it's easy to rent out. 
but there are also periods when everything is down, when it's difficult to rent your house to someone or your property or your commercial property, whatever it is. But if you have purchased that property with a mortgage, the bank does not care. The bank isn't there like, oh, you couldn't find a tenant, no problem, you can skip your payment. That's not how it works. You still have to keep be making payments to the bank regardless if you have found a tenant or not. And that money will come from your pocket. And you have to consider that when you are investing in real estate. So despite real estate being such a great investment, you have to understand that there are some downsides to it. Now, especially if you start managing multiple properties. Like if you have one property, it's not a big deal. You can kind of manage it with your job. Like you go to your job and if something breaks down in that house, if you have to manage that house somehow, you can find time to manage that property. But what if you start managing 10 properties? What if you start managing 20 properties? What if you start managing 100 properties? Do you know how difficult it is to manage so many properties? Now, anything beyond 20 properties, you need to hire people to manage all of those properties. You will need to set up a small real estate management company to be able to do that. It's not as easy as you think, no matter how hard you work. So real estate is not like stocks. You see, when I buy stocks, for example, or anyone buys stocks, like if Warren Buffett wants to invest in a certain company, what do you think he does is that? Yes, he will easily buy those stocks and he does not care because he bought a share of a business and that business is managed by the management of that company. As long as he made the rational right investing decision, he can comfortably sit there and relax while his investments will keep growing. But if you purchase so many properties, you will have to set up a small company in order to manage all of those properties. The properties won't manage themselves. And that's one of the big reasons why Warren Buffett does not want to invest in real estate. Because he knows that he will have to dedicate much more time than you probably imagine on that real estate. It's not like he just bought the real estate and he can forget about it while the value of it will just keep rising. No, that's not how it works. Yes, that's how it works with stocks. And that's why he's more focused on stocks. Because he wants to do his homework. He wants to apply his strategy in finding the right investments. But he does not want to hustle with all of his investments. If it's a bad investment, he can just get out of his position. But with real estate, that's not an option. That's one of the big reasons why Warren Buffett always avoids real estate. And unlike you who is there trying to think about his first property or maybe second property or third property, Warren Buffett has a completely different problem. He has to invest billions of dollars. And when you're investing billions of dollars, it's not easy to get into real estate and throw $10 billion and make an astronomical return like he does in, in stock market. The next problem with real estate is that you cannot possibly find a great deals in the real estate. It's much more difficult. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it's extremely difficult. Yes. Over the long run, real estate prices keep rising. Yes, when you buy a property, you will get your annual rental income by renting that property. But overall, you don't really beat the market. Like Warren Buffett did not become the richest investor of all time by just, you know, consistently making as much money as the market is making. No, he made such a fortune of $130 billion by consistently beating the market. And that is impossible to do in real estate. Like if you compare real estate to stocks, for example, when there is a panic in the market, when investors, especially immature investors who does, not, who does not know much about the stock market, they start getting afraid. They will start to panic and they will start selling their stocks and the value of those stocks will fall down. Why did it fall down? Did something bad happen to the company? Did the company collapse? Absolutely not. The stock dropped because some investors were afraid and they sold their stocks. So Warren Buffett, as a professional investor, as someone who understands the market, who is not making emotional decisions, he picks up those stocks, he picks those undervalued stocks and makes money when these stocks rise back to their initial and true value. And that's not something you can do with real estate. When the value of your house drops, do you like scream and you want to sell your house as soon as possible? Absolutely not. Let's say you purchased your house for $500,000. Do you really care that tomorrow the value of your house is going to drop to $450,000?
Do you care if the value of your house will rise to $700,000 or $600,000? Absolutely not. Like the daily fluctuations of prices of your house doesn't matter because this is your house. You freaking live in that place. It's a roof over your head. Yes, maybe someday you will sell your property and you will care about these numbers. But overall, it doesn't really matter. We don't even have a market that can accurately tell us which house costs how much. Yes, we have all of these indicators here and there. But overall, most people don't care as much as they care about the prices of the stocks. Of course, if the value of your house keeps drawing over the next 12 months, for example, by 50%, you will start thinking, am I living in the right place? Should I sell this house? Maybe it's time to sell this house. But even when you make that conscious decision to sell your house, you're not just considering the monetary benefits out of that selling of that house. You're thinking about your life in general. Let's say, do you want to move to a different neighborhood? Let's say you have kids, you have family. Moving to a different neighborhood means that your kids might have to change school. You're, you, you will have to fundamentally change your life by moving to a different place. So there's so many factors that you have to consider before selling your house. And which is why a house is not a liquid asset. It's not easy to sell your house. Compare that to the stock market. In the stock market, there are plenty of companies that are undervalued for one reason or another. And you could be making a thousand percent on your investment, something that you can never achieve in real estate. Take NVIDIA, for example, the company that sells computer chips and semiconductors. Over the last 10 years, the price of the NVIDIA stock has risen by 18,500%. Do you know any real estate that has risen by that much over the same period of time? Absolutely not. So if you invested like $10,000 in NVIDIA 10 years ago, your $10,000 today would be worth over $1.8 million. Yes, a $10,000 investment in NVIDIA would be worth that much today. And if you were a bit more generous and you invested $100,000 in NVIDIA 10 years ago, that would amount to what, like $20 million or something like that? A bit less than $20 million, probably $18.5 million. That's a lot of money. You cannot get such opportunities in the real estate. I'm not saying that every stock is going to rise that much, but if you just take a look at the real estate, there aren't such opportunities. It's impossible to make that much money in an extremely inefficient market like real estate. Let's even say hypothetically that there is such a great deal somewhere in New York, for example. Guess what's going to happen? There are plenty of realtors who will come across that opportunity way before Warren Buffett even hears about that opportunity and will close the deal for themselves or for their clients. For Warren Buffett to make such great investments in real estate like he does with the stock market, he must have like a network of agents, like a network of spies across the United States that will report to him every single good deal in the market, just like KGB used to report to the Soviet Union back then. But that will cost him so much money that I don't think he will ever consider such a project. Although that, it sounds like a great idea. I mean, think about that. He will create the first most efficient way to invest in real estate. But when it comes to the stock market, he does not have to have that network of agents and spies across the United States because we have all the information online. Yes, you're watching this video and you have all of the information. In fact, you have, you're capable of accessing all the information that Warren Buffett is accessing when he's researching a company or the stock market in general. And the stock market is filled with opportunities such as Nvidia if you know what you're doing. Now, here's another problem with real estate. You see, if you purchase a $500,000 house, in the long run, the price of that house will keep rising because we have something called inflation. Like everything just gets more expensive. The Fed is printing more and more money. The more there are money in the economy, the less valuable those papers will be. And a house provides a service, like it provides a shelter, it provides a roof over your head. But a house does not produce anything beyond that. Like there are so many limitations, like a house does not provide you anything other than that a roof over your head. But when you're investing in a company, that company is not like a house. It doesn't grow because we have something called inflation. The stock of a company grows 
when the company starts producing more, when the company starts selling more, when the company starts hiring more people, building more factories, it starts growing. And that is why the price of this particular company has grown so much. Because over the last five years, they have built 20 factories. They've increased their sales by a thousand times. That's why the price of the stock has increased by a thousand percent. Here's another problem when it comes to investing in real estate. Let's say you have your $500,000 house and you find out that the true value of your house has risen to $700,000 and you have taken a decision to sell your house. Now, it's not easy to sell your house because you have to find a buyer first. And that's not an easy job. You know, it will take you maybe not just weeks, maybe months. In some cases, you'll find out that some houses are there for years that no one wants to buy them. But let's just say hypothetically that you have found a buyer within a few months. And even when you found a buyer, it will take you some time to do all the papers, sign the papers, and change the ownership of that house. So by the time you might sell your house, the value of your house might go down from $700,000 to $500,000 because there is so much time that is going on. Well, when it comes to the stock market, you can buy and sell in a glimpse of an eye with a few clicks. So even though that you try to sell your house at $700,000, now you cannot do that any longer because prices have come down and you just wasted all of your time and all of your effort trying to sell a house and you couldn't. And if you sell it right now, you'll just sell it for the $500,000, making absolutely no profit at all. But let's say that you have invested $100,000 back in 2014 in NVIDIA. And your investment today worth over $18.5 million. How long do you think it will take you to sell your investment? An hour? A day? A month? Absolutely not. Just pick up your phone and sell your stocks in a glimpse of an eye. It will take you less than five minutes or probably less than two minutes. And that's the biggest difference between the stock market and the real estate. Stock market is just more efficient. It's way faster. If you're looking to make as much money as possible in the shortest period of time, then you have to go into the stock market. Real estate is not your option at all. And that's a decision that Warren Buffett has made back then. Here's Warren Buffett's formula for investing and finding great stocks. Back in the 1990s and early 2000s, his best friend Bill Gates tried to convince him to invest in Microsoft. In fact, he tried to convince him to invest in any tax stock. And Bill Gates is not just a random guy. He founded Microsoft and he clearly understands what is technology. He knew that technology is going to dominate the world in 10 or 20 years. So he spent a lot of time trying to convince Warren Buffett to finally invest in Microsoft. But guess what? He did not invest in Microsoft. Was it because Microsoft was a bad company? Was it because it was a bad investment? Absolutely not. Imagine how much money Warren Buffett could have made if he had invested in Microsoft. And besides just missing the opportunity to invest in Microsoft, he did not invest in Amazon, in Facebook, in Amazon, and many more companies. In fact, he entirely avoided technology stocks. The question is, why? Because he could not understand technology. Like Warren Buffett only invests in companies that he perfectly understands and he can predict their future. You have to understand that Warren Buffett is not young. He's like 93 years old. He's elder than my grandfather. So back in the 2000s, he was around 70 years old, which is also pretty old. So it's normal that he did not understand technology back then. And yet even that he did not understand technology, he did not invest in technology, and yet he still ended up as the richest investor of all time. And that's some of the things that we teach in the Intelligent Investing Academy. We teach you how to spot opportunities. And these opportunities just not might not just be tech stocks. They could be in any industry. We teach you how to find out what investing strategy you have to choose that works for you. We teach you how to analyze stocks, find undervalued stocks. So as you're watching this video, Warren Buffett is making tons of money by exploiting all of these opportunities. So for everyone who is interested in learning how to invest like professional investors, I will leave a link to the Intelligent Investing Academy in the description. So he avoided technology stocks and focused on the things that he's really good at, which are banking, insurance, and commodities. Like one of the best investments he has ever made was in Coca-Cola. 
Like Coca-Cola has been around for over a hundred years and he grew up drinking Coca-Cola. He even used to sell Coca-Cola to his classmates back in school. So he could perfectly understand the business model behind Coca-Cola and he could predict where Coca-Cola is going to be 10 or 20 or 30 years from now. So he spent $1.2 billion investing in Coca-Cola. And today that investment was worth over $25 billion. And every single year, his Coca-Cola shares pays him a dividend of around $700 or $800 million annually. It's one of the best investments that you could possibly make. Not only that the value of your stocks are growing so much, but you're getting cash on hands every single year from this investment. Back in the early 2000s, he invested around $250 million in Moody's. It's a financial rating company that rates how banks are performing, how companies are performing, and even governments. And guess how much that investment is worth today? $7.5 billion. Now, give me an example of real estate that can get you that much money. Give me an example of real estate that can get you such returns. There aren't such examples. You can't find them. It only happens in the stock market. In 2016, Warren Buffett kind of understood what is technology. So he decided to make his first investment in technology stocks. So he threw $30 billion into Apple. Yes, in 2016. And that $30 billion today worth over $150 billion. In such a short period of time, he made so much money. He increased his investment by 500% in this period of time. Can you do that in real estate? Absolutely not. I don't want to trash talk real estate and tell you that, no, never get into real estate. No, that's not the point of this video. Real estate is one of the great investments out there. And I personally invest in real estate. But Warren Buffett's strategy was very different. He wanted to become the, one of the richest people in the world. He wanted to build like what? A trillion dollar net worth or a company or a trillion dollar company and a personal net worth of hundreds of billions of dollars. And that was something impossible to do through real estate. So his plan was that, how can I make maximum amount of money in the shortest period of time? And that is why he chose to go into the stock market. So if you think that real estate is for you, if you're not aiming to make that much money, if your plan isn't to compete with Gates and Elon Musk, if you don't want to become a billionaire and want to gradually build your wealth, then you can go into real estate, especially if you love real estate like I do. But if your plan is to dramatically increase your net worth, if your plan is to get in and make maximum amount of money in the short period of time, then you have to go into the stock market. And that's one of the things that we teach in the Intelligent Investing Academy that if you're interested, you can check out using the link in the description. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.